Hello, welcome to this sklearn k-means example video. In this video, we are going to use the mall customer segmentation data from Kaggle to perform our k-means clustering. And not only that, we'll also create charts on top of our clusters and also download the data and see how the segments were classified. So let's dive into it. The mall customer segmentation data has five columns, customer ID, gender, age, annual income, and spending score. We're going to be using age, annual income, and spending and spending score for the cluster analysis. But before that, what we'll do is we'll analyze the three variables and select two variables that are very easy for us to cluster. Remember, this is a basics one. So we're going to use two variables to perform the cluster analysis such that we can represent it visually on charts. So let's go into the code. I'm just going to go into the full mode here. We'll begin by importing the libraries. We have pandas, numpy, seaborn, and matplotlib. And then I'm going to use this one line, matplotlib inline to display the charts within the cells. Let me just run it. Moving on to import the data from the location, we are just going to run this piece of code and see where the data set is located. And it's located in this location. So I'm just going to copy this code and then paste it here so that we can import the data. So if I run this piece of code, it will import the data and it will have all the five columns that we saw earlier. Now, what we're going to do is rename the columns so that it's easy for us to use. So for that, what we're going to do is rename columns. We're going to say data frame dot rename columns is equal to um, give the annual income and rename it to income, give the spending score and rename it to spending underscore spending underscore score and then say in place is equal to true because we just want to make the change permanent on this data frame. So if I do this, you'll see I'll have the same columns, but just the age and spending score will be renamed in a proper manner. Now let's go and check the descriptive statistics of the data. I'm going to say df dot describe, and it's going to give me this particular piece of information. So if you look at this information, the minimum customer ID is one and maximum is 200, which means we have like one to 200 customers. And you can see that by this looking at this count here. Also, if you look at the age, the mean age is 38, which means most of them are around this age with a standard deviation of plus or minus 13.96. The minimum age is 18 years old and the maximum age is 70 with 75% of the population being under 49. So this is giving us the you know, information or spread of age. And similarly, we have the income spread and the spending score spread. You'll see that, you know, a lot of population has a 78K of income and a large population of this small customers has a spending score of less than 79. This is just giving us information, the, the descriptive statistics of the data. But let's look at three of the variables on a plot and see how these variables are looking against each other. So if I run this particular piece of code where I say SNS.pair plot with all the three numerical variables, age, income, and spending score, you'll see the plot will look something like this. So here we have age, income, spending score, age, income, spending score. Now this will be the histogram for each of the variables. So you know, income against income will produce a histogram here. So you're looking at the spread, not all of them are normally distributed here in, in this scenario. But let's look at two different cases to analyze. So if you look at spending score, which is what the mall customers are very interested in because they want to improve the spending score of these customers. This spending score is divided based on age. So if you see the spending score of 20 to 40 is really high, it's going up. The moment you go beyond 40, you will see that your spending score does not go above a 60 range. So this is one good example where we can form two different clusters, uh, one less than 40 and one greater than 40. The second one 
is what we are interested in and where this is where we will create our cluster analysis that is with income and spending score you will see that five neat clusters forming in so k means cluster says that you know if you have a business case of clustering your data then you might as well go ahead with that in this particular scenario we have five different clusters visible on this chart and then we're going to aim for creating five clusters of this data right and this is again remember using two variables that is spending score and income and this will allow us to create this five clusters. So our aim in this particular video will be to create these five clusters using income and spending score. So let's see how we can do that. So if I want to perform the k-means clustering with five clusters, what we'll do is we'll import sklearn.cluster as cluster. Then we'll say k-means is equal to cluster.k-means, right? So from this cluster, we're taking the k-means and then we're giving the n clusters is equal to five. Remember this chart has five, so we are just going to use five because that's easily visual. Now with three or more variables, it's very difficult to visualize it. Uh, and there we'll be using the sell out or the elbow method to choose the number of clusters, which is the topic for the next video. Then we're going to use the init is equal to k means plus plus, which is a better algorithm to cluster than the normal k means. Then I'm going to take this k means, whatever I have declared here, and I'm going to say k means dot fit, and I'm going to give two variables, the spending score and income. So if I run this particular piece of code and do the k means fitting, look at the cluster centers you'll see these are the cluster centers we have. So 49 spending score with an income of 55 is one cluster center, 20 spending score and a income of 26K is another cluster center and then so on and so forth, right? So we have this five cluster centers, which we can now use or attach in the original data set and try to plot and see how it looks like. So if I go here, I'm gonna attach this cluster back to the original data. So I'm gonna create a new column called as clusters, DF clusters. And then I'm gonna take the K means labels that will be zero, one, two, three, four and store it within this. We can then check the data and see if the column is added. So if you look at this data, we now have all the columns that we originally had, but also we have the cluster information. Now the clusters column will have zero, one, two, three, four. That will be amounting to five clusters. If I want to know the count of customers that belong to a certain cluster, I can simply do the df clusters dot value count and we can see the count of customers that belong to a cluster. Now, each time when you run this cluster analysis, it's not guaranteed that you have the same cluster label being assigned to a cluster. It will be randomly assigned, but essentially the clusters that they form will remain the same. I've exported an earlier version of this particular data and you'll see I have this information with clusters and I can then then basically take all the information and summarize it at a cluster level to see the magic happen. So I'm just going to take the clusters to the row area, expand this information and then take age to the values area and choose that to be, let's say average of it, right? So if you look at this particular information, you'll see that the cluster zero will have beyond 40 as the age and their spending score and on an average, will be looking something like this right this, they have a very low spending score as we saw in the graph example and if you see there is this segment which is much more younger but their spending score is a lot higher right so these cluster representations will be easy to visualize if we do it on a chart so let's go ahead and do the same on a chart now i have this clusters count here we can simply export the data with this particular piece of code, the one that we have seen, and it will export the data. You can find it within Kaggle uh, in this particular location, mallcustomers.csv, and you can then download it from here to see what I've just shown you. So to plot the data on the chart, what we're going to do is you're going to use the two variables that we use in cluster analysis, and then use hue as cluster. So we have X variable as spending score, Y as income, hue is equal to clusters and data frame is equal to df. With this, we'll be able to see a plot with all clusters in it with just two variables. So you have this income here, spending score here, and you have these clusters represented here. Now I know here the representation is 
missing one value, the two value. But ideally, if you just reduce the size, you will be able to get all of these labels here. Now let's look at the chart and analyze what's happening here. So if you look at this, you'll have a segment that is this particular segment here that has low spending score and also a low income. So naturally they'll remain here. But what's interesting to the mall customers is this segment, this segment and this segment. This segment is already spending more and is also in the high income groups. They don't want to touch this particular customers. Maybe they want to, you know, recommend some high value products that came into the mall. But for this customers, they are already spending and they already have a high income. Now, these three segments become very interesting for the mall customers because then they can choose these customers and target them specific things. So if there is a low income group, but their spending is high, they want to give certain product recommendations to these customers, which is in their price range or give discounts such that this customer comes and purchases in the mall again. Now this set of customers, which amounts for a large amount of customers, that is the spending score is between 40 and 60 and their income is again between 40 to 60 K. They want to basically let them come into the mall and spend on their regular needs or whatever it is. So I have to give them some coupons or something like that such that they move to this particular area. They want more customers from this bucket to move into this, this particular bucket. And obviously the ones that are high income are having a spending score of less than 40, which means there is a lot of potential to get a lot of revenue from this particular set of customers. So here you want to pitch products that appeal to them that are expensive and so on and so forth. I'm just making up some of the examples here, but ideally this is what the cluster analysis leads to where you're able to analyze a particular cluster, cluster and do the necessary targeting or run a different campaign on them to potentially convert them and extract more revenue from them. So this is how we do uh, sklearn k-means clustering. In the next video, we will create an Enbo plot and Silhort score. With two variables, we are easily able to see the kind of clusters that we want to form. But with three or more variables, it becomes difficult to visualize it on a chart. And hence what we will do, we'll try to plot an Enbo plot or a Silhort score to find the right set of clusters for that particular data. Thank you for watching this video, guys. If you like this video, please do not forget to hit the thumbs up button and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel.